In this presentation, we will record the purchase of raw materials on account. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our job costing company dashboard. We're going to start off by going over to our Excel file just to consider what our objective will be. We'll take a look at this transaction in the format of a raw journal entry and then think about how we'll enter this into our accounting system into zero. So the transaction is going to be a 1 1 or January 1st purchase raw materials on account 400,000. This is going to be what the journal entry looks like. And then we're going to consider the effect on the financial. Now note that when we're considering the raw materials, we have to know, we have to consider whether or not that raw material is going to go directly into a particular job as we purchase it, or if we're going to have to allocate it to the jobs in some way, shape or form. If the materials were going directly to the job when we purchase it, then we could assign it to the job and basically assign it to a cost of goods sold account. And we'll see examples of that uh, in the future. It'd be similar to when we entered the beginning balance in the system. If however, we're purchasing raw materials and we're imagining that they, we have them, you know, adding up somewhere that we're then going to have to allocate to the job, take basically out of our warehouse, imagine them coming out of our warehouse and then to the job. Then we need basically kind of an inventory type of account in order to track that. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to be putting this information into, in essence, an inventory for raw materials. And then we're going to be purchasing it on account, meaning we're not paying cash for it at this point in time. We're going to put it on account. And we owe the money in the future. What would be the effect of this transaction on the financial statements? The raw materials, basically inventory account then would go up. So it's going to be increasing the other side going to accounts payable because we have not paid cash, but increasing the liability, something that we owe in the future. Also note that if you have this 400,000 now that's in materials and we have to allocate that to the job then at this point in time and you have multiple jobs that we're going to allocate to, then there's a question, do we want to track that raw materials item by item like wood, planks, you know, stuck or whatever, uh, or in, in the accounting system, actually in zero and then track the inventory items that will be more complex to do within the accounting system, but it is possible to, to track that or we can just basically put it into a general ledger account and track it in some other way, shape or form, possibly in Excel or some kind of worksheet that we're tracking uh, that will support this number and possibly use a periodic type of inventory system in order to, to track this information and then just basically make an adjusting entry into our accounting system. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to put it into the raw materials. It's not affecting the jobs right now because we haven't allocated it out. Once it does affect the jobs, we're going to take it out of the raw materials and be allocating it to those jobs that are affected. Okay, so what, how would we do this then in our system in zero? So let's go back on over to zero. We're going to be using a form to do this. We're not going to do this with a journal entry, but with a form as our most transactions. That's what the default kind of method will be. We don't go to the journal entry. We go to some type of form if we can. And then uh, if we cannot go to a form, then we default back or go back to a journal entry. The form we're going to use is just a bill type of form. So the easiest way to get to the forms is to go over to this little plus button on, on the uh, upper right hand side. And then we're just going to enter a bill. So we're going to enter a bill. Now, remember, when we enter a bill on our side, it means it means that uh, this is a bill coming to us. Right. And when we bill somebody else, like for our services, we call that an invoice. So a bill typically for the system here for zero is going to be the bill that we owe to somebody else as opposed to a bill we're sending to somebody which is going to be called an invoice all right so we're going to say this is going to home depot home depot and i'm going to say tab the date here we're going to say is january 1st so i'm going to make this uh, 010120 and then the due dates i uh, didn't pick that up let's do this with the drop down we'll say the drop down and bring this on back to january 1st and then we'll say this is February for the due date. So this is when it's due. We'll say February at the end of February. And so that's going to be that. We're going to go down to the items. Then. And we're actually not recording an item. We're going straight to the description. And I'm just going to say raw materials that we're going to purchase. Now, if it was something that we're going to track in uh, the system as basically an inventory item. And we wanted the system to be able to track and count the inventory then we'd have to set up the inventory as an inventory item here. However, like we said before, we're just going to be putting this in the general ledger uh, account and then we're using like a perpetual system to track the inventory. Then we'll move it out of the raw materials to the jobs with uh, another transaction, which we will see in the future. So I'm going to say one 
the unit price is going to be that 400,000 and then it's going to go into the raw materials account which is going to be the asset account let's see what we have thus far we may not have a raw materials asset account so far so if i scroll here through here we've got uh looks like equipment no we do not so let's go ahead and add it i'm going to put it in there at something like uh let's say 300 140. so 140 is going to be the account number and so remember that number so when we get there you could tell me what it is. so we're going to go back up and say this is going to be add new account so we're going to go into the add new account and then the account number i'm going to keep here at the 140 so the one and they say it's not available one is is not available and so let's make it 142 142 and then i'm going to say the account type account type is going to be a uh, current asset type of account and then the name we're going to call it raw materials so raw materials we have up top and i think that's all we need that's going to be it so let's go ahead and say save and so we're going to add that account and there is our bill so what's going to happen when we record the bill the bill is going to be increasing now the asset account that we just set up for the raw materials that 142 account and then the other side is going to be going to accounts payable increasing the payable let's go ahead and approve that and then we'll take a look at our financial statements to uh, see it on that side all right so it looks like it's been approved let's go open our financial statements going to the accounting drop down we're going to be opening up the balance sheet first so accounting drop down opening up the old balance sheet it's going to bring the date out to 2020 so i'm going to bring this on out to uh 2020 end of january and then i'm updating that report so we'll update that report and then what we see down here is of course the raw materials i'm going to hold down control and scroll up a little bit uh to bring that to that like that one two five that's where i like it so then we've got the raw materials here four hundred thousand if we select that four hundred thousand then let me go into that four hundred thousand here is our transaction. So there's going to be the 400,000. If we were to drill down further and select that 400,000, you'll notice it's a it's a payable invoice. That's what they call it uh, on the type of form, basically the source document, the form, the data input form. Let's go into that 400,000. And that then will take us to the bill. So here's the bill. Here's the data input form. So that's how that works. I'm going to be bringing this back. I'm going to go back then to the balance sheet so i'm going to bring it back here and then go back to the balance sheet okay so there where's the other side it is of course in the accounts payable so there's the accounts payable the 445 so here's the 445 if we were to select that item then we'll see the detail for it and of course the detail shows that uh, payable invoice as well so there it is no effect on the jobs thus far so no effects on the jobs we haven't applied it to the jobs when we do we're going to transfer this to the cost of goods sold in essence and then of course apply it to the jobs or projects at that time now we can compare basically the the trial balance or the balance sheet to what we have on our excel worksheet now so you can see it in in both formats in debit and credit format so at the end of the day We've got the 300,000 in cash, and then we increase the raw materials to the 400,000. So if we go over here, here's the 300,000 in cash. There's the 400,000 raw materials. Then we have on the liability side of things, or we have the equipment uh, and, the, and the accumulated depreciation still on the books. No effect to them. No effect there. So we have the accumulated depreciation and the equipment. Then on the liability side of things, now we have the 445,000 in the liability there it is four four five thousand and the capital account or the retained earnings in our case is going to be the 612 so everything lines up we will be uh, making the trial balances as we go and and printing those out so you can have a check your numbers kind of thing uh, as you go but of course you can also check your numbers here with the excel worksheets as we move through these tabs and look at it from a from a trial balance format it's from a journal entry format and then enter it into our database system where it's it's a little less transparent but we still be we should be able to generate in essence the same general forms that being uh, the trial balance and then the related balance sheet and income statement that are created from it so that's going to be it for now let's get out of here